day to you my friends, my name is Donato and a very warm welcome back to my channel. Yes, it's you, me and my cup of tea. And today we'll be talking about heart rate training and the Maffetone method. Yes, it's Tuesday tutorial time. <laughs> Let's go. Oh yes, my friends, a very warm welcome back to my channel. Whilst I've got your attention, if you are new here and you haven't already done so, please do click on that link below there and subscribe to this channel. It is free to subscribe. And if you find it useful anyway, give it a thumbs up because apparently those two things help my channel. Whilst Google or YouTube have not mailed me directly telling me this categorically, apparently so many YouTubers say this, it must be true. Yeah, so click on that link, subscribe, thumbs up. Thank you all so much. On with the tea drinking and tutorial, of course. Ah, oh yes, yes, yes. For those of you who've been watching my channel for quite a while, you remember I've done the Fast and Fun Friday Run series. Link up there to uh, that uh, series, covering the 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon distances, and all that fun and frolicky distancey type things. But you might have noticed that over the past few weeks, I've been learning, reading, catching up with new things, learning from you guys. Yes, you guys leave in the comments below. And uh, one of my questions of the day is, uh, I'll say one of my questions, I could have more questions. I don't know. But uh, if I was to do a podcast, would you listen to it? Leave it in the comments below. Podcast as in, you know, just voices and all that kind of things. Apparently it's the in thing, I don't know. Um, so I might do one myself. Um, I haven't come up with a title yet, but I've got some vague ideas. I might do that and uh, might be talking about running, might talk about other things in life. But, um, but yeah, on with this Tuesday tutorial. Heart rate training, Maffetone method. So many channels here have been talking about it. Some of them regurgitating it. I did touch on it many, many moons ago, but I thought I'd do something specific. I'll quickly save you hours and hours of deluging through all sorts of things, but uh, the long and the short of it, hey, to run fast in endurance running. Yeah, I'm not talking about 100 meter, 200 meter sprints, 400, 800. I'm talking, I mean, for some people, endurance is 1500 meters, but I'm talking, say, 5K and above. So the best way to run fast is to run slow. That's right. Yeah, yeah, I know. It's contrary to popular belief. And so many beginners like myself, we always used to run at a particular pace. And really, that's what some people might call junk miles. So in summation, I'll just talk about there's five heart rate zones. We all, a lot of us use these gadgets, heart rate monitors. We train to heart rate. So you need a heart rate monitor, chest heart rate monitor, in particular, not the wrist heart rate, because I think they, the technology is not quite caught up. Because when you're running, your arms are swinging, and you can't really monitor your heart rate. And also, for a lot of old school people, they would say that uh, the chest heart rate isn't accurate either. But uh, we've got to work as close as we can to those. So the Maffetone method, in simple terms, to train a particular heart rate based on your age. So it's a simple 180 less your age. There are other factors that you can bring into it, but that's in summation what it is. So for me, um, being 58, that would take me down to a heart rate of 122, which based on my uh, wrist heart rate, it's the, uh, sorry, the monitor, my watch that I wear on my wrist um, 120 zone one that's right zone one heart rate so that means running pretty slow uh, really slow and uh, what that does I won't give you the whole scientific breakdown because that would take probably a few months years of a degree PhD yeah there's also but there's a thing called mitochondria which in essence helps our system to endure particular speeds for longer periods of time. That, that's it in a nutshell. So we train at a slow heart rate and I'll talk about this particular book and how that links in. It's called Total Heart Rate Training. Now it is an old book. I think it's published in 2006, but to sum up the Maffetone, it's 180, less your heart rate. And if you do, it talks about doing all of your training in that heart rate and maybe a few weeks before, six weeks, I think is often the, the buzz time, is you throw in some snappy, fast speed work at your race pace to get the uh, muscles up and toned ready for race day. But in essence, we train at that Maffetone heart rate all the time. All our runs are at that training. Yep, that's the Maffetone method. Got it? Thumbs up, yeah, makes sense. Now, heart rate training, this book I've been reading, 
takes it a step further, yeah, because obviously they, they're all similarities. So this book is really old. I say it dates back, it's copyright 2006. There's website links in here. The websites don't exist anymore. That's how old this book is, yeah? But I picked this up from a group that, um, uh, that I'm, I've been invited in and I follow and it's all top elite athletes. I'm talking guys, you know, sub 230 marathon runners, sub three marathon runners. So they know what they're doing and they've been running for many, many years. Not just a couple of years like me, I'm just a novice beginner. Uh, who happened to get fast because I was following my intuition and funnily enough my intuition is what's in this book yeah I know so I've just finally tuned it a bit now what it talks about is depending on your endurance sport and I'm looking to get into triathlon next year endurance triathlon not the sprint distances short distance but endurance ones and it talks about training in specific zones now what this book it shows you I don't know if you can see this now I've showed it sideways so you can get the whole page, but these are the different zones. So zone one, two, three, four, five, yeah? And depending on what distance you're training for, it tells you how to split it. But can you see a bit of a trend there that most of the charts is in heart rate zone ones and twos, and then a tiny little bit in zone five. Depending on what kind of races you're training for, it will tweak the zones three, four, and five, but the bulk of training is in zones one and two. Does that make sense? So slow, 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 or different types of slow, depending on zone one and zone two. And this is where the mafetone sort of borders in between zone one and two, coincidentally, maybe. But uh, I think I need a sip of tea because uh, I've been rambling for quite a bit now. Mm. So the key thing there is most of the training is in zone one and two. Why in zone one and two? Because it's easy, easy, easy. You do lots of it, lots of miles. You hear people talking about doing, for running fast marathons, they train to 100 miles a week. Now I'm not um, saying you should go out and run 100 miles a week, swear, because you probably get injured because there's only two reasons why we get injured. Why either run too fast for our fitness or we run too far for our fitness. So we need to build up both of those, both in terms of speed and endurance distances. So we have a plan that helps us build up to that, but all our training is always split that way, that most is in zone one, less is in zone two, and then a little bit into uh, zone five. So if you hear that phrase of junk miles, junk miles is where it has no real effect for our training. If you do most of the training, and it talks in zone three and four always, then you find you'll probably peak to a certain limit and you might be susceptible to fatigue and injury. So that's why zone one helps with the recovery or a phrase that I've often heard is active recovery, which is basically rather than recovering and doing nothing is you recover by doing something. And uh, for me, my active recovery is walking. Yeah, and I'd certainly enjoy that. I've started to introduce more zone one uh, running after the long runs. But that depends on how I feel after that. So that's that, in essence, in summary, is it. So find a training plan that is mainly zone one and zone two. And then as you get closer to uh, race day, start tweaking into uh, your zone fours and fives and uh, race days. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing for the past couple of years. Without the, these books, it's just something that I've developed and learnt and it works for me. And I've been having to fine tune it because obviously, I, as you know, I've been picking up injuries myself. So I've been learning what, what I've done and I think it's all down to my, my own fault. And uh, I might do a video and, and how I get myself injured. But as I said, it's only for two reasons and it fits into one or two or com combination of two. Too fast for my fitness or too far for my fitness or running too far too fast. Yeah. So which is why we don't race every weekend. That's it guys. Hope you enjoyed this, found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And if you did find it really useful, then as it's coming to Christmas, the goose is getting fat, show me your money and we'll all be on a out your hat. Hey, there's a link below, coffee.com slash Donato. Make a donation to this channel and help contribute to uh, me continuing sharing all this wonderful stuff that I'm learning. Thank you all so much. And don't forget, you can subscribe here, click on the link there, or click on here for the Fast and Fun Friday Run series. Cheers guys. Love you all. Bye-bye-bye.